Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is December 31st, the last Monday of 2018, and ordinarily this would be a wonderful day for murder. Only today, I got something a little bit different in mind. Since this is the last Monday, and indeed the last day of 2018, I thought I would have a little bit of a different video here for you today, and we are going to go into some of the Jiseki that you should probably be knowing for 2019. A lot of these are going to be a review for some of you who are very well up on your modern Jiseki, but those of you who aren't, maybe you missed me covering these in various videos here and there, but this is a nice little video where they're all like in one place. So, cool. Now, I know what a lot of you are gonna say. You know exactly what Jisekis are coming up. And you're right, they are. But that's okay, because we do need to know them. So. Let's get it out of the way. Let's get it out of the way. You know, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. You see the four four point. You know what's coming. And yeah, first set of Jiseki that we had to talk about involves the three three point. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. It hurts. It really hurts, doesn't it? At this point, you're probably saying to yourself. Are we really going to be seeing 3-3 three, three invasions that much? You seem to be mentioning it an awful lot. Are you sure it's not just a meme at this point? And to that, I can only say that yes, we will be seeing an awful lot of it. Take Go for Go, for example. You might say, oh, there's no 3-3 three, three invasion here, but there was one here. There was one in here. Looks like we got a 3-3 invasion over here and over here. Um, that was a 3-3 invasion. We can see that that was a 3-3 invasion. Um, I don't think that one was, but we definitely have one over in here and over in... Uh, over in here and over in what looks to be here and here and here and what looks to be over in this one and that and you're getting the you're, get, you're getting the idea that game over there that the very bulk of what we're seeing is three three invasions so it is very very important to cover them since pros are playing them you can be almost guaranteed that you will in fact be seeing them in your own games as well so let's go over those things there are a few ones that you are probably not going to be seeing anymore. You probably won't see this so much anymore because we know that losing Sente here is not so fun because then your opponent just splits you and there's a whole range of annoying things um, because they don't go that far into it. You could say, but this is good shape, and you'd be right, it is good shape, which is why they usually bail somewhere around here and then you've just lost sente and there's no really good way of getting it back you can play the hane they dodge you again and just get that much closer because let's face it you can't do anything here you just can't this is alive they lived in sente and then took your large point away kind of annoying but that exists so we don't play that anymore Instead, we wind up playing either just backing off high in an effort to keep Sente. If they do something like this, let's say, then we can go off and play a move elsewhere. Not bad. This isn't really that bad uh, for black because this is just 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So if we get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, then it's an equal result. Hopefully get a little bit more because we need to overcome Comey, but you get the idea. Don't need to keep all of this to be equal to that, in other words. There is the other variation we've already gone over. There is this one, in which case your opponent will be playing this. And the Hane here is very, very important, along with the cut on the inside. You've seen me go over this before. At that point, we have two choices. We can Atari here, make this exchange like so, into Jiseki. That, however, keeps in mind which way you want to block in the very beginning, because you see in this variation that white is kind of out on the left-hand side. So if we blocked this way to build it, then we did a bad. If we want to build, we can play solidly, but if we want to play the uh, aggressive variation, then we need to block aggressively in the area 
let's say, that we want or th that we're not really trying to build. It, it's that whole counterintuitive thing that I've mentioned uh, repeatedly before. If we block this way, long story short, then we get what we're looking for. See? Now we've got the wall building up the left-hand side, even though we blocked originally to the other one. It's weird, but whatever. Uh, your opponent can Atari here, and you're still happy because we still have the block. Your opponent can do this kind of thing, and the same thing. We have a nice, strong shape here. We can even ignore that for the moment and play a larger move elsewhere. And either way, we haven't gone wrong. So bear in mind which way you want to block and respond accordingly is what I would tell you. However, you have to beware, and I don't think double-digit cues are going to find this, but maybe five cues and above. Because uh, five Q is usually definitely the range where you start seeing people like trying to imitate the Jiseki that you're seeing in pro games and whatnot. At least that was my experience. Uh, Don, definitely. There are dangerous thing. Dangerous? Is that a word? No. There are dangerous things afoot that you must be careful of. Very, very careful of. Because even though we are blocking in this way, let's go back and play the other one because I like it. I like it when it looks that way instead. Sorry, I'm being picky. Even though we can play this expecting a result, the result that we are getting might be a little unexpected. For example, your opponent um, could play here. <gasps> scary, scary, scary. But it really isn't, because when they play this way, it's completely fine. Uh, for whatever reason, I've seen this couple of times before, but it's just an okay shape. I'm even fine connecting here, though it's technically regarded as a little bit small to do so. You technically have Sente to play elsewhere because that Atari uh, is meh. But yeah, this is sometimes played. Don't freak out. Just take a couple of points. Like, what did they just get? One, two, three, four. Did we just get more than four? One, two, three. And yeah, we got way more. So, I mean, you're fine. Whatever. Don't freak out. That one's not the scary one. The scary one, sadly, is what happens when your opponent plays <gasps> that one. Now, there are a few variations here that we're not going to go over. Let's just keep it relatively simple. The Hana here is a thing. We block, they push, and this is where all the excitement happens. Because you might say, I don't see why Black would never not play this way. I mean, he's getting a complete and perfect surround. None of that weird, complicated crap that you were just showing. I like the wall completely surrounding my opponent. I'm going to play this way. Be careful if you do. These cut points ain't your friend. Because now what do you do? Do we do this one? And already, those people with smarty brains know the answer to this is not yes. Because you cannot, oops, you are never holding on to all of these, right? Like, even right now, we can see there is a problem here. That just got killed, for example. They might say, well, that's fine. I'm going to play here. All right, then that just got killed. So it's not as clean as it looks, is it? We can't, can't really play that way. There's a few problems afoot. Instead, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, usually white, black plays here. And at that point, we will extend because we've already read that out, right? So we have to prevent that from being a thing. Okay, okay, okay. So we're going to Hane back, trying to re-make this be a thing, right? Okay, 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 okay. So we're going to Hane back. And then, you know, we can get, we can even get like a thing here sometimes. Opponent can just slide on down. The cut's now a thing. At that point, we're just going to give this up because 
That's that's how that's gonna work. Whoops, there we go. Now that's all dead and something a bit like that. There are multiple variations here. They all stem from the same thing. We're gonna be giving up these stones for influence. And we see this a lot lately. It's been in pro games all like this month. <laughs> I've seen it on Foxy, I've seen it on Taijem. I have thankfully not seen anyone try to play it against me. Long story short, yeah, there's a lot of variations here and they all go back to the same thing. Sacrificing the three for the wall in Gote, right? Because we don't need to move here. If uh, you play here, oh, nope, sorry, let's play somewhere else, go away. We play here, Atari, dead. Um, dead, dead, dead. So you're fine. You can play away from that. But that is the thing you need to pay attention to. Regardless. So now that that's done, let's move on to some another Jaseki that you've been paying a lot of attention to and seeing in all of your games, and that is BAM! That's that one. The Attachment. You see this a lot, especially when people are like ignoring moves and like getting pincered. We see that a lot, but we're now even seeing it just flat out as an opening Jaseki. So what do you do here? Do we play here? Psh, absolutely not. You just lost your corner for free. Don't do that one. We have to Hane. But I don't like Hane because like I don't like the Ko. Okay, then don't play the Ko. We're going to play here. This is a normal sequence. Atari down. And then here's a little bit of a fun thing. Your choice. You can play here. Your opponent can play here, here, and then here. That's fine. Situation resolved. No one got screwed. You can also play this one to keep white on like the third line, and black has sente from here. Because this group is fine enough as is. It's got a little out, it's got like a little B3 later, can do other stuff. So, yeah, we're good. We can go off and play uh, other things. Our opponent hasn't gotten too much territory here. We can easily make that equivalent over here. Not a problem. Good, just like you know. There is, however, something that you should know about this if we play the older variation. And that's that one. You might play this older Jaseki because I just so told you that it's okay to do, and then you're going to see this follow-up. And you're going to be like, why did he tell me to play this? This move sucks. Like, what am I doing here? I'm making a bamboo joint getting attacked? I'm never listening to that fool on YouTube ever again because this is terrible. But there's actually... Um, something else you can do if you don't actually connect and that is we can play here instead because you can't cut can't cut can't cut you did right two stones died cool and if we play here well <sighs> gonna get complicated again and now i should also mention i have a bit of a confession about this move i'm not really sure why we play it given what you are about to see and some of you might have already seen this but the answer to this move is often this one it's often here believe it or not it's actually often here and you might be wondering well why is that be and then we play something like this one looks weird looks weird looks weird our opponent can try to poke through but that's where this comes back to haunt us. Because when we play here, we gain extra liberties, right? Right, 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 right. See where this is going? See where this is going? Then he extends, and then we extend, and then there's a problem. There's a weird situation here. Very weird situation here. We can't push and cut. That's bad. We can play here, though. And it looks like someone's ahead. 
Interesting, interesting, interesting. We can also play here. And if they play here, we can play this one. And now we've got a mild case of the problems. I think, don't we? Yeah, technically we do, because we can Hane here, then here, then the two space uh, two step co, which is again, it's just a mess. It's a bloody bloody mess. I don't I don't understand why why anybody plays this sequence. It's just like another one of those Chiseki that is just like, really, why are we doing this? Uh, if we play here, there's also the counter extend. And then this just gets messy really, really quickly. Like, again, I don't see why anyone plays this because you can't actually play this. When you play this way, you it seems like you have to sacrifice this. It seems like you have to sack it. You are sacrificing it in Gote, mind you. So that's cool. I guess you're getting outside for just the inside. So I guess if like you had something like this or better yet, let's say something like this, then this is pretty good development, right? Pretty good development because we get to like build now because this is a solid connection point. So, I mean, that's a thing I, I suppose. Uh, every time I see it played played professionally, I just see it left at this point without anybody um, committing to it. What else have I seen? Either way, when I see it, I play it uh, played here for a development on this side by the outside player. And that player usually then goes back and tries to reduce it. And then at some point, white goes back and ends the uh, possibility of that coming out again. So it's, it's a very fine Jiseki to play. You get it wrong, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Just like, oof. World of hurt. World of hurt. Um, I have seen a simpler variation of this, I should bear in mind. I have seen this played. Into this one. And not giving up the stones. This just turns into kind of like a fighting pattern with like this and then some other move elsewhere. Very much more of a fighting pattern, but beware. If you want to avoid all this crap, I'd still say maybe play the old school thing and just extend. Just extend. All of that complication could be thrown out the window just by doing that. Just know if you extend up, this is a move that is playable, and it is a pain in the butt. Good luck. Good luck. If you want to avoid it, make sure you play here, and then all of that complicated stuff goes pew, right out the window. Now, let's take a break from the 4-4 and take a peek at the 3-4 once again. This is a very common one that comes up, and that is how to deal with this. This, again, not a modern variation, but know the difference between uh, how you respond here is very, very important because the lean is the most common one. This one is really old school. We don't see it very much these days. Um, just jumping out is very old school. We don't really see that very much nowadays. Usually we see sometimes here, but usually the lean. The lean is fairly straightforward. I see it mistaken a lot. This is probably the cleanest variation. We can just go ahead and settle like so. Can you push through here? You might ask. The answer is no, because we can just push through like this. Uh, we don't want to Atari, because that is what is known as the tombstone. Forget even trying to do anything here. Who cares if you can go off and kill this or not, even getting this result in and of itself is very, very bad for black. So instead, we wind up playing 
that one. And now the only thing we can do is Atari. And then hope that works. That better be a ladder that works. And if it is, then that's just another ladder breaker. White's completely fine. If it's not, we play here. And white can bring these stones out if white really wants to. It's a mess. It's not not my favorite result for, for black, let me tell you. Don't do it immediately, though. So instead, we just treat this as settled and we go away. The problem here is some people play this one and then this one. Now you cannot play that one. But you do get a chance. <clears throat> you do get a chance to build a lot larger now. Right? And the danger there, of course, is how many stones do you need to get from behind enemy lines? And the answer is one, two, three jumps. That's a lot of jumps. That means at any point, whoops, any point, white can go back and start capping you again, and it's just like turning into this whole board fight in the middle with. Like, what, what is this doing? I don't even know. Because this gets to settle itself. This gets to settle whatever this stone is here. It gets to be completely fine. So I don't know what we're doing with these three. Sometimes we're like, I'm going to kill. Okay, never mind. No, we're not. That doesn't work. Okay, that, 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 that. Guess I'm going to go out this way then. Like a good little doge. So be careful about that. Be careful about that. Good to know. Good to know. Easy sell, in my opinion. Don't do it as a DDK or 10Q, though. If you're a DDK or a 10Q, I would recommend... Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, approaching high. No. Uh, I don't know what I would recommend for you. I would recommend maybe just play the wall variation. And then just try your hand at pincering. Maybe. That might be simple. That might be the simplest thing. That might be the simplest thing. Or if you're okay, if you're DDK or 10Q, play the diagonal and then just settle. There you go. That's what I recommend. Change your mind. If you're a DDK or 10Q, just play this one. Do not play the other one. But if you do have some fighting skills available to you, then you can go ahead and lean and have some fun. Another thing I want to mention, because we are seeing it so much nowadays, is how do you respond to that shoulder hit? We're seeing a lot of enclosures off 4-4 four, four stones, off 3-4 stones, that sort of deal. And we are seeing an enormous amount of shoulder hits. So what do we do here? If you're thinking to yourself, it's cool, man. I can just get my territory, homie. Don't do that. You're losing the game. You're just not aware of it. Because, yeah, you pick up two for... 6, 8, 10, that's fine. But do you really think your opponent with this wall is not going to be able to uh, effectively get at least that for territory for himself? Because keep in mind, if he gets this for territory, like a line of stones here or wherever, that equals the top. So what are you actually doing? You're giving away equal amounts of territory, but more potential. That means you, not good, don't do it. Instead, <laughs> instead, it's very good to know when to play away. And here, for example, after just one move, it's OK to play away. Or sometimes, depending on the board, playing a low stone is good, because then you stop this from half, you uh, like keep this pretty controlled, and you can play, I don't know, maybe you can play a pincer here, or you can play a larger move or whatever, but we haven't really given a lot of strength away. We can even maybe play something like this as a poke later on and try to re-attack this. But if it's a solid wall with no Aji to use against it, we're not going to be happy. Same thing here. We see a lot of people going... Things like, um, I don't know, this into this into here into, you know, building walls. But again, this wall, the, the potential giving away and the territory giving away is so not a good idea, so don't do it. Like, if you got this, maybe we get to play something like this later on. Okay, that's great. That's great. Fantastic. 
but that's right, not right now. Let's just play somewhere else, even if it connects. Can we play this? Sure. Should we play it right now? Probably not. Better take a point away. If they play there, that's Gote. Who cares? Our corner's fine. We're good. We're absolutely good. So bear in mind, both people, we've kind of kind of don't want to keep playing here as both players because it's smooth so beware speaking of things that are interesting to take note of it is the two space enclosure now however you're going to see this come about oftentimes we see something like this approach our corner and then maybe we pincer it or we've just done something but i can think of a lot of positions where this position is occurring naturally in the game and your opponent then goes in and plays here or maybe you get this position and as white you're like oh i don't know what to do he's getting so much territory i'm under attack like how do i handle this well don't run this stone out stupid just go tap that corner and you'll be a lot happier for it why because this is a fairly easy way of living that right there is alive your opponent can't kill you. Isn't that amazing? Free corner, Aji remaining, gotta get rid of that. Sente out. Sweet. That's the danger of playing that newly fangled two space enclosure dealio, is that we can invade it. But this also can get messy. For example, what happens if your opponent plays here. Now you have options. You could just be like, I don't care. I'm just going to play something like, I don't know, here, here, and then like there I'm alive. Or you can play something like um, here into life. Or you can play, you know, whatever you want. You could just play and live. Cross-cutting is also technically a thing. It's hard to handle all those cutting points. Hard to handle with all those cutting points. Right, 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 right. This one, same thing. Still tough to handle because of all of those forcing moves that you see. Right? Gotta be careful. It's a lot of bad Aji. If you Hane in this position, be very careful. You're so, you're so risking so much. So much you're risking. So much you're risking. Be very, very careful. Um, now, if your opponent plays here, and you don't want to just be like, all right, you get to live here, or whatever. Let's say you have... Um, I know, fairly strong outside. You can't, oops, sorry, go away. You could play here for an attempted kill because this technically doesn't live locally, right? As long as there's nowhere to go, you can disrupt this. But we have to be very, very careful while we're disrupting this. The last thing that we want to do is kind of like let this completely get out. So beware if you're playing this aggressively that you can hold him in so he can't come out and leave. Because then you're going to be feel very, very, very stupid. Be very, very careful. Otherwise, it's better to just play like something like this, maybe, and then just be like, you know what? That's cool. I'm just gonna let you live there or play here and be like, you know what? That's cool. I'm just gonna let you live here. Protect my cutting points, things like that. But yeah, the two space. There is uh, invasion points there at that R3 stone, especially if you have an outside one. So bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. Checking, 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 making sure I'm not forgetting anything. 
there is one last thing that I do want to mention. It doesn't really bear looking over. It's, it's an old thing again. For whatever reason, we are seeing a lot of this move again. AI have been liking backing off here. Why? Probably because they dig territory and it's easy to see that, hey, we get territory here and like things here. So, you know, whatever. Doesn't apply much pressure, but it is a thing. Note that you can do two space extensions off of this. Depending on the board, you could also play over here because it's hard to actually attack and kill this stone. If we pincer, hey, does this look familiar? Yeah, it does. Look at that. Hey, I recognize you. We get to live back in here. How about that? How about that? Can still live back in here fairly simply. Um, and then this one, of course, is just brain dead. That's about to go into very, very bad places for black. Um, as is, you can also play here, but this is a little bit not good because we're going to end in like Gote or something. Not liking that. Better just extend back as is. So just bear that in mind. Though, if you do play this as black, you really do need another move here. Because we don't really want to see this one, right? Because we can't really pincer this. Like, what are what are what are we doing here? Like, is that is that even a good shape? It looks like it's not, right? Because like we're getting cut, and there's just like Aji there. So beware if you play the shape as black. You're gonna have to kind of invest in another move here. It's just the way it's gonna have to be, or. They're going to have to be very, very good dealing with like an attack like this. Hopefully, we have other moves here for playing this way and leaving this open. But even then, like if this settles, that's still a thing. So um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, but it's there. So beware. Anyway, I think that sums up the just like you probably need to know for 2019. Hope you enjoyed this particular video. I tried to keep it pretty short with some of just the more common Jaseki. Hope it was useful to you in your games. Let me know how you do. As always, see you next time. Take care, everybody.